Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Today, very exciting video as we will be putting head to head the Android XR2 Pico Neo3 Link standalone version of After 4 versus the HP Reverb T2 Steam VR version. That means that this will be hooked up to the PC with the RTX 2070 graphics card. And this will not be hooked up to the PC whatsoever. The experience will be native inside using the Android software and the XR2 chipset. I really am going to be curious about the differences in terms of the shadows, in terms of the graphic resolution, in terms of whether things are blurry, the clarity, jagged edges here and there. You know, what really are those little minute differences that provide optimum immersion inside of VR and of course the comfort of the headset also. Battery life, we can't really talk about that because a standalone is not hooked up to a PC, therefore it can only last about two, three hours, although it is good enough. But the tetherless experience can go on for days until, of course, you switch off your PC. Now, watch until the end of this video as I will be doing the announcement of the giveaway of the HP Reverb G2, as well as a Cybershoes gaming station and a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you can redeem against any Vive port, Steam VR, MetaQuest, or the Pico Store VR games. It will be completely up to you. So thank you very much to our sponsors. HP and Cybershoes, as they will be the ones who send you the HP Reverb G2, all the Cybershoes and the gaming station, which includes the chair and the carpet, and not us. So guys, do watch out for that. All right, but for now, let's go into VR. First, let's try out the HP Reverb G2 and how this beast handles things in After the Fall VR. All right, so now we're in VR with some side-by-side -side comparison. And I'm just gonna let it run as I give you my comments and thoughts about what I was able to see within the actual gameplay. Now, on the left-hand side for the HP Reverb G2, I would like to make it clear that there is absolutely no stutter during the gameplay. I think this is purely a bug when recording from the actual headset. It could be a cable issue or it could be another issue of some other kind. Uh, I was recording natively inside of the HP Reverb G2 and not on the screen recording recording from the actual mixed reality or from the app itself. So just FYI. Now there are some noticeable differences there between the standalone version of the Pico Neo 3 Link and of course using Steam VR, PC VR uh, with the, G, uh, the HP Reverb G2. First of all, you'll notice that there's a lot, a lot more, excuse me, atmospherics using specifically fog where there'll be more fog at the back areas in the distance, providing this illusion of much more depth of field when you're inside of the actual location within the hub here as we are. Also, of course, the other difference is that it seems to me that there are more lights around than using the standalone, again, giving you this added immersion effect within an atmosphere within the actual scene. And of course, the third most notable, noticeable difference will also be the texturing on the floor, as there's a lot more details there with the actual HP Reverb G2 in Steam VR than they are when you're using the Pico Neo 3 Link, without a doubt. However, saying that, even though it feels like there are less lights inside of the hub or other areas using the Pico Neo 3 Link, and the textures are much more simple. You don't have as many depth maps, for example, that give you this sense of specularity on the towels, for example, or moisture around. I have to admit that, and of course there's less fogs, less fog, sorry, at the back as well. So there's less depth of field and it feels like the lighting is 
more or less the same at the back and what you see at the front. I have to admit that the fact that there's no jagged edges whatsoever shows you the power of the XR2 coming out in the gameplay. It feels very comfortable. I was very, very generously, positively surprised when I had my Pico Neo 3 Link on my head. And I must admit that if I had never tried Steam VR before, I personally would have been very content or I am very content playing after the fall with the Pico Neo 3 Link as opposed to having to spend more money and having the experience in PC VR, which is quite a shocker because I am very much a PC VR fan versus the standalone Android XR2 experience. I'm glad to report that in both versions of the game in the HP Reverb D2 using PC VR and Steam VR and the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version without being tethered to a PC, so using the actual headset itself, you can also access the main menu when you're inside of the game to change a whole heap of different settings, including, of course, your height, as this can be an issue if you feel that you're either too high or too short. However, the only thing that's missing inside of the Pico Neo 3 Link in the settings menu itself will be the option to change the resolution of the video. So you're not going to be able to change, for example, the super sampling in adding more super samples or less. And it makes, I guess, perfectly sense because we do not have an RTX 2070, which is what I'm running inside a PC VR for Steam VR's version on the HP Reverb G2 in the standalone version. There is simply no graphics card attached or coming wirelessly even as we can stream wirelessly to the PC using the Pico Neo 3 Link as well to Steam VR, but because when you're running the standalone version, you're not hooked up to any you know, external graphics card of any kind. So it doesn't provide you the option, for example, to adjust the sharpness or to adjust the shadows of any kind. So everything that is running inside of the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version is completely native without having the option to change anything whatsoever. So that is good and also, of course, bad, depending on your preferences, especially if you are a hardcore PC VR gamer. But I have to say that the adjustments made for us as consumers inside of the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version are adjusted very nicely. So you won't really feel noticeably the difference if you're not a hardcore hardcore PC VR fan. If of course you are a hardcore PC VR fan, then there are going to be some noticeable differences there. The shadows won't be as pronounced or as smooth, but I have to admit, as I mentioned before, it is pretty well adjusted natively. Now, of course, inside of the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version, there are other differences, especially when we look at the characters which we have to talk to, for example, Luna. Now, if you look at her hair, you'll notice that in the standalone version, there is no detail inside of her hair. It feels like she's wearing some kind of, of in fact, net on her head that doesn't show all the various different hairlines inside of the hair itself. you also notice you know, for example, her arm, the robot arm that she has, there are less details there. Also, there's less details on her clothes with the specularity, the textures, the painting there, and also the various different maps that developers use to create the 3D kind of effects. You'll also notice behind her on the train or the wall there that there are less details, less objects there, and also there's a loss of specularity maps and kind of moisture maps to show you as to how the light bounces. It feels very much like everything is more or less painted. It's more of a painted matte or map, as it were, as opposed to a detailed matte or map that has been added into the scene to create this added or additional kind of 3D effects and depth inside of the atmosphere that renders back into the gameplay. So even though you do lose, you do lose, excuse me, all these details, you still, however, feel that you're pretty immersed there and you still feel that you're taken by the character that you're talking to, it definitely doesn't feel like 
um, you know, you're losing any form of immersion whatsoever, but it does feel like you're more inside of a video game, I would say a 3D game, as opposed to a hyper-realistic kind of feel compared to PC VR, even though the PC VR version, of course, doesn't look hyper-realistic, but that is the feel that they are trying to sell to us. Now, something that I've noticed that I feel is something that vertical games have done perhaps purposely or unpurposely, I'm not quite sure, is that when you're wearing the HP Reverb G2 as well as the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone experience, it feels like the graphics are slightly overblown. Now, I wouldn't say by much, but it just feels like everything's a little bit stretched out. Uh, the avatars of the other characters feel a little bit blown out of proportion. Also, the arcades feel a little bit large to me in comparison to the real world of a real arcade. It just feels a little bit off to me. Now, this could be due to the Fresno lenses as well, as they are a rounded shape and they are pretty big. So it's very possible that the lenses in both the HP Reverb G2 and also the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone are actually magnifying a little bit the graphics that are coming from where it's supposed to be coming from all the way to our retina. Now, also, when you do start off the game in both versions, you may feel that you're slightly short. So you might find that the other characters are too high. But as I mentioned before, thankfully, you are able to bring the control panel towards you and rectify the height directly in both the HP Reverb G2 and also the Pico Neo 3 Link. Now, noticeably, the differences in both the safe houses uh, compared to the HP Reverb G2 and the Pico Neo 3 Link is the fact that there's a lot less atmosphere inside of the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone after the full version. There are less lights, there's less fog, there are less things moving around, less details, and of course they took down all the specularity maps and also the 3D maps that render more detail inside of the actual textures on the walls or the floors, and they also took down some lighting there, so there's noticeably a lot more less difference than on the PC VR version, which is packed full of shadows, specularity, moisture, fog everywhere, and all these kind of different things that are missing on the Pico Neo 3 Link. However, as I mentioned, there are no jagged edges and everything is super clear and super crisp inside of the Pico Neo 3 Link, which really makes me feel quite excited to start killing some zombies. Noticeably, when we go outside and we start to kill the zombies, there are also some little details there Perhaps they're very minute to see, but they are there nonetheless. For example, when we're using the standalone version on the Pico Neo 3 Link, um, you'll notice that when you're firing the gun, first of all, they won't fire, the fire itself that comes out of the actual gun won't be as big as the one compared to the uh, HP Reverb G2 when it's hooked up to the PC. The other thing is with the HP Reverb G2 or the PC VR version is that the shells will come out of the actual gun and fall onto the floor, which is something that you're not going to see on the standalone version, which is Again, you don't really notice it when you're on a standalone unless you would have really, you know, seen it on the PC VR version. Noticeably as well, now on the standalone, I really have to say that the depth of field is very nice outside. There's definitely a lot of fog in the background. The developers managed to keep that there so that everything that is clear and towards the actual viewer or nearer towards you, then of course there's no fog. So it really will give you that sense of depth of field and it enables the game to continuously render fast because it means that whilst everything is hidden by the fog, then of course all the 3D objects are missing behind there. And as you get closer and closer, the fog then reveals little by little all the objects behind. Now I found that the number of particles that are falling from the sky, I'm talking about the snow for example, there's definitely less particles in the standalone version. It feels more like there's some spheres there just falling from the ground as opposed to being snow, let's say. So it feels a little bit, I would say, cheated there. But 
you know, of course I understand because particles take a lot of computation. So there's not much that the developers can do in order to create the snow effect coming down from the sky. However, on the PCVR version, of course, there isn't that issue whatsoever. All the particles are different sizes. You have some small pieces of snow coming down or larger pieces of snow coming, or flakes of snow uh, coming down. As opposed to standalone, it feels like all the flakes of snow, flakes of snow, excuse me, are more or less the same size. Now you also miss the detail in the blood that is on snow on the PC VR version. You'll notice there's more specularity maps there, which means that the lights will bounce from the actual snow uh, depending on where it is, of course. Uh, however, on the standalone version, you'll feel that the maps are more or less painted and baked into the snow as opposed to feeling like it's on top of the snow. So things definitely feel more plain and less 3D-esque, let's say. However, I have to say that the developers did do a good job and I still felt very much immersed within the world itself. Now, the other difference is that there are two noticeable other differences between the standalone and the PC VR version on Steam, which is, first of all, when you're on the HP Reverb G2 headset, and you have to accumulate credits, which are these little, very bright, shiny orange things. When you go towards them on the PC VR version, you'll notice that they'll come automatically towards you with some trails there, which is really beautiful. And also the sound effects will follow with them. However, on the standalone version, you'll notice that when you go towards them, they will simply disappear fade away as it were they're not going to come towards you so this animation has also been taken out so as to save computa computational power inside of the standalone version now does that add more to the gameplay yes it does but again if you weren't inside of the pc vr version and you hadn't experienced it you probably wouldn't really care so much about these kind of things to be honest with you and also the other noticeable difference are the shadows there are as many any shadows in the standalone version when you're outside compared to the PC VR version. Again, it means that you'll lose some of the atmosphere there. But again, if you haven't experienced the PC VR version, I can tell you now that comparing the graphics on the XR2 chip compared to the XR1 chip, the differences are night and day, which means that you will still have an amazing experience inside of the standalone PC uh, standalone Pico Neo 3 Link version of the game. Noticeably, the biggest difference, and I feel that this is really where the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version really lacks compared to the PC VR version, is not so much when you're outdoors, but more when you're indoors. Indoors, it definitely feels like it's a flatter experience, and also it's a darker experience because you don't have all the lights that they put inside of the PC VR, PC VR version inside of the standalone version. So instead you have one light that's there or perhaps a couple, but at the end of the day, you don't have the light bouncing back from the walls as you do as much on the PC VR version, which provides basically more atmosphere inside the PC VR version compared to the standalone version. So that's really where it lacks, I would say, in terms of the gameplay. However, I must admit that the colors and the contrast inside of the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version are very good. The darks definitely feel very, very dark. I don't feel that there are dark grays. I feel that they're dark blacks, which is quite surprising considering the fact that it is using an LCD screen and not OLED. However, the G2, of course, with the LCD screen also is a very powerful contrast between the blacks and the brights. The blacks are very black too, and the brights are very bright. So when you are in a dark environment, you will definitely feel the hilly jibbies as you would, of course, on the Pico Neo 3 Link as well. You'll also notice some differences on the sprawls as they come along during the gameplay. On the PC VR version using the HP Reverb G2, you'll notice that the textures are much more detailed. There are more maps. As I mentioned before, they added the specularity maps as well as the uh, depth map. And you know, this really provides you the sense that this is something very 
very organic there. And however, you uh, I mean, also what you can see is you can notice the actual fog or, or, or not the fog, the actual fumes coming out from the plant itself. So it's supposed to be a hot plant with different textures, the blacks and the gray fumes and also some flames coming out of it. However, on the standalone version, you'll notice that there's absolutely nothing. It just, you know, breathes in and breathes out. But the actual textures themselves, again, are very flat, just painted there. And if you are a hardcore PC VR gamer or you're used to the PC VR version, you know, these kind of things perhaps may disturb you. But as someone who perhaps doesn't have a PC or just hasn't experienced PC VR before, you're definitely not really going to notice it because it still feels very, very immersive and just a lot of fun. And finally, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the most noticeable difference or other difference in the standalone version of the Pico Neo 3 Link is the fact that you can't interact with the actual zombies after they are, you know, have been blasted out of oblivion um, that you can do on the HP Reverb G2 or the PC VR version. You can actually manipulate them or touch them. Um, when you touch them with a the gun, you know, they will move, their head will move or their body might move. You can't do this on the standalone, on the standalone, your gun or whatever will go completely inside of it will act as a transparent body however what's very interesting of course is that the developers made it so that even if a zombie is on the floor after they've been killed you can still shoot them and then you know certain various different body parts will fall off and blood will sputter absolutely everywhere but it is interesting that they were able to make them opaque or transparent, if you wish, on the standalone version in order to save some computational power versus the PC VR version where you are actually able to interact with the objects using your weapons as well. So guys, all in all, a really good experience using the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version of After the Fall, I have to admit. I will also post more videos of my experience with it, of course. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of all those awesome future videos that we'll be uploading to the channel using the Pico Neo 3 Link standalone version of the headset as opposed to purely using the Steam VR and the DP4K cable, for example. But of course, there are some noticeable differences, as I mentioned here in the video with the side-by-side -side gameplay. And I must apologize. I will try to do another recording in the future. I just simply did not have time to redo everything. And I did promise you guys to announce the winners of the HP Reverb G2 competition giveaway and the Cybershoes gaming station with the actual cyber chair, the carpet, and the cyber shows themselves as well and the voucher today so I really wanted to you know uh, to be here today and to be able to do the announcement with also the video so I'm very sorry that, that there is a lot of stutter on the HP Reverb G2 recording as I mentioned I had recorded inside using the inside G2 camera and not actually a screen recording from the games screen or from the Windows Mixed Reality screen. So my apologies about that. But I do hope that this video do share, you know, does shed some light. If you are an Oculus Quest 2 user, I would love to know in the comments below whether you feel that what your experience is, is it comparable to the standalone of the Pico Neo 3 Link? Because I have to admit that for me, the experience was absolutely amazing. And the fact that there were no jagged edges, honestly, I was expecting a really worse experience. I was really expecting a lot of jagged edges everywhere and things being blurry and all these kind of things. And it really wasn't the case. Also, throwing bombs with the controllers is an absolute joy because the controllers of the Pico Neo 3 Link are much bigger than the HP Reverb G2. With the G2, I have to have mammoth grips, which doesn't, I mean, it makes it easier, but it's not, you know, the controllers of the G2 are not particularly very convenient for throwing things for sure. So the Pico Neo 3 Link there really did some justice when throwing some bombs out 
into you know into blasting specific uh, zombies. But I had a lot of fun. In fact, I'm having still a lot of fun with the Picono through Link uh, standalone experience in After Four. So Vertigo, great job to you. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Please h hit the notification bell after subscribe and also the like so we get more views and more people joining the channel. Guys, you're absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for your support to the VR Essentials channel. I will see you in another video very soon. And do leave a comment. Let me know if you really enjoyed this kind of videos and I'll do more in the future. Until then, take it easy and have an amazing week ahead. Bye guys.